Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at something really awesome. Bado Sierra Linux running on a jailbroken PS4. Now this is pretty cool, and in the past on the channel I did a video showing Linux running on this same unit here. If you're interested in checking that video out, I'll leave a link in the description. But in this one, we're going to be running Bado Sierra. And this is actually the full-fledged Botocera operating system running from an external drive on the PS4. And basically, we're going to turn this into an awesome emulation machine capable of doing GameCube, Wii, PS2, PSP, Dreamcast, Game Boy Advance, so on and so on. And there are higher-end emulators in Botocera, but personally I've run into some issues with things like Wii U using the SimU emulator. Down the road, I'm sure we'll get a lot more work in here. This is version 1 of Botocera. And in order to get this up and running, obviously you'll need a jailbroken PS4. So I've got a PS4 Pro here on firmware version 9. I'll talk about some awesome resources and tutorials in a second, but let's go ahead and load up this exploit. And sometimes it doesn't work the first time, so I will need to reload this. And uh, I'll just back out. We'll go back here. And the first thing I'm doing here is jailbreaking the PS4. So you have to do this every time you reboot the PS4. This is the online exploit, or the browser exploit here, using Gold Hen. It's telling me I need to insert my USB with the exploit on it. We'll go ahead and do that. And if everything goes right, when I press OK, we'll get a jailbroken message. So we successfully jailbroke. So now I can run Homebrew and Payloads on the PS4, and for this, Botocera is based on Linux. Like I mentioned, we're running the full operating system from an external drive. This isn't the base version of Botocera, just downloaded from the website and flashed to this drive. There's a little bit of setup that needs to be done. It's actually a custom version for the PS4, and it's version 1. It's by a developer who goes by the name Noob404, and we'll take a look at the YouTube channel in a second, because that's what you need to follow to get this set up on your PS4. It'll work on the PS4 or the PS4 Pro, and that's the one we're working with today. So right now the PS4 is trying to boot Botocera from that external drive. I've run into a couple issues where I did have to redo the whole process, but I think we should be good to go. I've still got lights here. There we go. So now it's going to read that kernel. It's going to boot directly into Botocera. And like I mentioned, if you do shut the PS4 down or reboot it, you'll have to go through the process again. But once you have this all set up, I mean, it's just a couple of clicks once you start it up, and you can be booting into Botocera. And here it is. So the DS4 controller does work. I will have to turn it back on. It'll repair to the PS4. I've already set all of this up. I've installed games and everything like that. And uh, in this video, we're going to be testing out some PSP, some PS2, some GameCube, and some Wii. So like I mentioned, this is version 1, and I have run into a few bugs. Mainly, it really comes down to sound. I've had sound cut out on me a few times when I start up a game. And uh, just to give you a look here, we're on Linux kernel 4.14. Now you can go with a higher version if you want to, but I followed right along with Noob404 to get this up and running. I tried it twice. The first time it didn't work, so I just went with exactly what he did in the video, and I was good to go. If you're interested in getting this up and running or another variant of Linux running on your PS4, check out this YouTube channel here. It's PS4 Linux. This is who created this Botocera image here. Remember, it doesn't have any ROMs or anything. You have to add all of that. But he's got an awesome tutorial over here. He's also got a full website with a ton of great information. Link for this channel will be in the description. And really, if this is kind of your first time even thinking about jailbreaking your PS4 or even a PS3, check out Modded Warfare's YouTube channel. Link for this is down below. I follow all of these tutorials here. Awesome, up-to-date, easy to follow. And yeah, I mean, if you're just thinking about jailbreaking anything, check out this YouTube channel first. All right, so I mean, the Botocera interface or emulation station interface works great on the PS4, but what about game performance? Now, like I mentioned, with the lighter stuff, you want to do some Mega Drive, some SNES, you're not going to have to worry about it. I mean, it's going to run it just fine. What I wanted to check out were some higher end systems, and we're still going to start off light here with PSP. And by the way, I mean, everything here is working. If you want to use Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, it's a full function Botocera system running on the PS4. After all, the PS4 does use an x86 CPU. Now, albeit drivers aren't perfect for this right now, like I mentioned, I was still running into some audio issues, but it's version 1, and it's working way better than I ever thought it would. Okay, so this is actually the standalone version of PPSSPP. If I head into the settings, we've got the OpenGL back in. I'm not going to try to swap it right now. 
we're going to go with, uh, let's do 3x resolution on this and see what happens. All right, OpenGL back in, 3x resolution. This is running great. I mean, I kind of expected it to run these PSP games really well. And when it comes down to it, Tekken 6 isn't the hardest game to emulate for this emulator here. I consider it a mid-range game, so I want to move over to something like Chains of Olympus and see what we can do. I think I might need to drop the resolution down to around 2x for that one. Actually, I didn't even have to drop the resolution down to 2x. We're still at 3x, but uh, no sound. And this is one of the issues I've run into. With a few of these PSP games, the sound totally cuts out once you launch the game. But if I go back to the interface and launch another one, we'll still have sound. It's really, really odd. Other than the audio issue, PSP is actually running really well on this system, so I'm going to take it up to PS2, and we'll just go with Gran Turismo 4. And by the way, this is using the standalone version of PC SX2. From the main menu of Botocera, if you press F1 on a keyboard, we can go directly into that emulator and mess around with the settings. I've enabled the frame rate and speed up in the top right hand corner. Alright, so yeah, it might sound odd to some people that, you know, the PS4 can't handle PS2 games. I was actually expecting this to be a little slow because it's working in a much different way than the official Sony PS2 emulator. You know, when they release PS2 games on PS Plus and you can play them basically perfectly on the PS4, it is a bit different. Right now we're using a totally different operating system with a non-optimized emulator, but uh, seeing it run like this is really, really cool. And of course, we had to check out God of War 2 here. Now I'm sure, you know, through the whole catalog of PS2 games on this operating system right now, you're going to run into some that don't run well at all, even at the native resolution. But uh, for the games I've tested so far, not bad. I also went through and I tested Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Not a super hard game to emulate, but it runs really well on this at 720p. And as you can see, God of War at the native res is totally playable. Now it's time to test out something I was super excited about, GameCube and Wii on the PS4. Now in the past, with different versions of Linux running on the PS4, it actually performed really decently. I was able to upscale to 720p with some of the harder to emulate games. And overall, I had a really good experience with it. And by the way, with Botocera here, I'm using the standalone version of Dolphin that comes pre-installed with it. So again, if you want to just launch the standalone emulator and mess with the settings there, you can always do it. I mean, I'm getting the same performance here that I did with the other versions of Linux and the Dolphin emulator. I kind of expected it because I'm using the same Linux kernel that I was with the other variant of Linux that I tested on the PS4. But we've got a totally different version of the Dolphin emulator. This is a little more up to date because I did that test a few months ago. But yeah, it is playable here. I've got one last system to test here, at least for this video, and it's going to be Wii. We're using the same exact emulator that we were with GameCube. We've got Tatsunoko vs. Capcom upscaled to 720p, looking really good, and this is definitely playing at full speed. Pressing Start and Select on your controller will bring you right back into the Emulation Station menu, and we can go through and play some more games. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one, at least for the testing here. Now, this is really awesome, it does take a little bit of work to get set up, and it definitely might be worth it to some people. One thing I'd actually like to see in the future is just an easier way to get this up and running. And I'd also like to get some of the higher end emulators running on this, like Wii U and maybe even the Yuzu emulator. I'm not exactly sure how well both of those will run. But when it comes to Wii U and the SimU emulator, it's very highly optimized. I mean, it's been on the market for a little while, the developers have done an amazing job, and I think we might get some playable Wii U games on something like this. And you could leave this Linux drive plugged in, but remember, once you restart the PS4, it's not going to be jailbroken anymore. You'll always have to do the little exploit, at least at the time of making this video. 
but this might change in the future. But yeah, if you're interested in trying this out, links for those two YouTube channels are in the description. Check out Modded Warfare's YouTube channel to get jailbroken, and then you can head over to Noob404's YouTube channel to get these Linux tutorials out of the way. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on the progress, and once I can get some higher end stuff running on this, I will make another video. So if there's anything else you'd like to see running, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.